Welcome to the Sunday After Christmas Children's Sunday School. I'm Miss Susan. Hope you had a good Christmas this past week. Might have been a little different. Ours was smaller than normal, but we still celebrated the birth of Jesus. Were you able to finish your Advent wreath and light your Christ candle on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day? I hope so. So now that Christmas is past, let's see what happened in Jesus' life after he was born. I'm going to read to you the Christmas story again. We kind of did it in bits during our Advent Sundays, but I'm going to read the whole story now. It's in Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that was a census, and it should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch on their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men of whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. So now, Jesus is born. Mary's thinking over all this commotion that's happened. Shepherds coming saying angels came to them. It's a lot to take in. Now today, our lesson is about what happened after Jesus was born. There's a Jewish law that a baby had to be named on the eighth day. Also, since Jesus was the first child for Mary and Joseph, he had to be consecrated to God at the temple in Jerusalem. There were two people waiting to meet Jesus at the temple. So that's our story today. It's from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. Now the story of the nativity is just the beginning of Jesus' life. There's a lot to learn about him in the gospel. So here's what happened. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as was written in the law of the Lord. Every male who was firstborn shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there were probably a lot of people in the town and in the temple at that time, but one man in particular came to meet the Holy Family that day. In fact, this man had been told that he should go to the temple because the Son of God would be there. So verse 25, 
Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Wow, imagine learning that you wouldn't die until you saw Jesus. What a special promise Simeon had been given. But he had to wait a long time, years. Hmm, what's something you might have had to wait for? Well, this year we probably all had to wait on a trip we wanted to take because we couldn't go anywhere. Or maybe you had a special toy you wanted, but you had to wait until Christmas to get it. Well, God told Simeon which would be the special day he waited for. Verse 27. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought the child to Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. So Simeon recognized that this was an incredibly special baby. He had probably dedicated and blessed many babies, but he knew this one was different. He also gave Mary and Joseph words of blessing, but provided them warnings as well. Mary and Joseph might have been a bit concerned about some of these words, but they marveled over the things this man was saying. So Simeon probably felt great joy seeing the Messiah. Even though he was just a baby, he was the Savior. He had hope and comfort that God would continue to do what he said he would. Now Simeon wasn't the only one to joyfully witness Jesus that day. A lady named Anna was there also. Verse 36. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she got married, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping and fasting and praying night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. Now Anna was old and had lived in the temple serving God. What do you think about living full time at church? Whew, that'd be hard. But Anna was dedicated to God and she too realized that Jesus was a remarkable and important baby. What was her response to meeting the newborn Savior? She gave thanks to God and told others about him. Verse 39. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew up and became strong, filled with wisdom. And the favor of God was upon him. So Jesus' life began in the temple with people of God looking over him with gladness and realizing God's presence and promises had come true. What do we learn from this? Well, we can see that trusting in God and waiting patiently will pay off. Also, the response these people had was to give thanks and praise and tell others about the king. We know what Jesus ultimately did and should feel more obligated to proclaim the good news. It's the greatest gift we could imagine, and it's free to all who put their hope in him. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for showing us how Jesus was born to be our Savior. We are glad to hear about Simeon and Anna. They had waited a long time for the Savior to be born. When they met him, they rejoiced, worshipped, and thanked you for sharing the good news with them. Help us to share the good news of Jesus with people we meet. Thank you for Jesus. Amen. So Friday we'll start 
the new year of 2021. What new things do you want to do next year? I certainly hope that things might get back to normal, where we can visit with friends and family, travel, and maybe even get back to Sunday school at the church. We'll have to wait and see. But whatever next year holds for us, we can be sure that God loves us and he will never leave us. Next week, we're going to learn about the wise men who came to find Jesus. Bye-bye. See you then.